Come on in. Come on into the webinar. My name is Linda Peavy, and I'm going to be your hostess for this afternoon, where we are going to talk about how you get that grant money for your Black-owned business or your Black-led nonprofit. As you come in, say hello to me. I am in the land, not too far from Cleveland, Ohio, where it is a chilly, frosty, cold 27 degrees. So as you come in, say hello and give your city and your state a shout out. Let me know where you are coming in from. So don't be shy. Into the chat. Let me know who is with me this morning or this, uh, this afternoon in a couple of minutes. Oh, Lisa is coming in from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Oh, Lisa, I'm not going to hold that against you since I'm a huge Browns fan. Hey, Angel from Dallas. The big D is in the house. Look at Texas representing. Hey, Carol from Sugarland, Sugarland, Texas. Hey, Tanisha is up in the CLE. Cleveland is up in the house. Hey, Tanisha and Rodney from Atlanta. Hey, Charlotte from... Compton, California has arrived and Veronica from Charleston, South Carolina. That's right, Rodney. Go Browns. Hey, Elaine from Michigan and Joshua's coming in from Kansas City, Missouri. Congratulations, uh, Joshua, for uh, winning the Super Bowl. Keith is coming in from, let's see, Baltimore, Oh, Lisa, I'm not even going to say that. I'm not even, I'm not going to say, you're not going to get me to say that, Lisa. And Tanisha, hey, is in the house with Cleveland. Hey, Angela from Indianapolis, Indiana. So as you come in, say hello to me. I am Linda Peavy. I'm the owner of Apop Consulting, and I'm going to be your host for this afternoon. We are going to talk about how you get that grant money for your Black-owned business or your Black-led nonprofit so it is noon, so we're going to get started. The first thing I am going to do is uh, share my screen. You're going to see like my little 30-second TV commercial. And uh, once you see it, it will give you some background information about uh, who I am and how I'm able to help you. Hey, Rosalind from Kansas City. And Luke is coming in from Daytona Beach, Florida. Yes, as you come in, say hello to me, and we are going to get started. Make sure you give your city and your state a shout out. Rosalind is coming in from Kansas City. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to get started. Look, every time I hit this share screen button, I always say, like, come through technology, come through. So again, the first thing you're going to see is just my little 30-second TV commercial, which will give you some background information about me and the work that I do. But it's like, come on, come through. It's looking good thus far. All right. Hi, I'm Linda Peavy, owner of Lapov Consulting. My passion is to place your organization on the path to excellence. Are you struggling to communicate your message, reach target audiences, or secure funding? From marketing communications to grant writing, we achieve your goals. We've worked with high profile clients and have secured $17 million in funding for charter schools and nonprofits. Call today to discuss what your success looks like and how LaPov Consulting can help. All right. So that's a little bit of information about me. I want to make sure everybody's in the right place. So this is my grant writing for Black owned businesses and Black led nonprofits. And yes, this is my noon session and we are live. Now I have another session later on at seven o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And I will be dropping the link into the chat a little bit later, just in case you know someone who wants to show up for the noon session. All right, more information about me. Yes, they call me the Grants Queen because I have secured over $17 million in funding grants and business development. And this is my 16th year of owning my company, LaPov Consulting. And every one of those 16 years, I've been a professional grant writer. I have not only written grants, but I was hired to create the grant application to write those questions and to create the request for proposals for organizations. And I am also a proud alumnus of the Goldman Sachs 10,000 Small Businesses Program. I am also a member of Forbes Black, which is an organization of Black leaders affiliated with 
Forbes magazine. Now, I have also been the executive director of a nonprofit. I have a business now, but yes, I've led a nonprofit. So I want to know who is here with me today. Let me know in the chat. Are you a nonprofit or a for-profit or maybe you're both, right? So some organizations are starting both. If you're a for-profit, you might be starting a nonprofit or vice versa. Ah, Terry says both. Absolutely. So, okay, for-profit, for-profit, nonprofit. So there's, there's both here with me. So let me just start off by saying really, really clearly, because sometimes I get this question even at the end of the webinar. Yes, there's money for you, whether or not you are a nonprofit or a for-profit. If you're a for-profit, you're a small business, right? It doesn't matter if you're a sole proprietor, LLC, partnership, S-Corp. Yes, there's grant money available. And I know this is something new, right? Because when we thought about a grant, what did we think about? A nonprofit, but everything's different now. Right. So, yes, there is money for you as a small business, as a for profit. And we will talk more about that as we move forward. All right. It is story time. How did I get in this position? I was a publishing executive in Pennsylvania and I was there for 10 years. I was in like the Valley Forge area. And I got hurt. And when I got hurt, I had to move home to recuperate, literally came home in a wheelchair because I couldn't even stand. And it took me two years to recuperate. And at the end of those two years, I couldn't find a job. I was in Cleveland. My experience was in marketing, but the publishing sector, right? And as you can imagine, I have a couple of people from Cleveland with me. Cleveland is not like the publishing mecca of the United States. So I couldn't find a job. So you know what? I started my own job. I started LaPaul Consulting. That was 16 years ago. I never looked back. Now, one of my first contracted positions was to be the executive director of a nonprofit. And I don't think I was there a week before I was called into the board of director's office and told that I had to write a grant to pay for my salary, thus saving my job the saving the organization. Now, look, we're all family here, right? So you know that there are times when people that look like you and me, we're called in to save the day, to save the program, to save the project, sometimes to save the entire organization. So if you know what I mean, give me a yes in the chat. If you know what I mean, give me a yes in the chat. Right. Oh, I'm seeing some, yeah, I'm seeing some yes, yeses, right? You know that happens a lot. Well, you know what? I learned how to write grants. I learned how to write that grant. I saved my job. I saved the organization. And I learned at that time that there is this amazing connection between getting free grant money. Grant money is free money, right? And being able to use it to operate, to grow, to hire staff, to really flourish, right? Some of you are not even open yet, right? You, you, you can use grant money to open, right? There are startup funds available. So we'll talk more about that connection as we go through. So what else will we talk about? Why this class is important? What are the keys to funding? We will go over some grant basics. We will talk about how do you prepare to write grants? Then what do you write in the application? How do you write? Then how do you write in a way that's going to get you noticed? And then how do you write in a way that literally will make your application stand out in a sea of applications, right? And then I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you how to conduct grant research so that you find the organizations that want to give you funding. And then don't go anywhere because I have a surprise for you at the end. First of all, I have a list of available grants opportunities for you. Next, we're going to do a thorough Q&A. People who know me know I answer all of the questions. So get ready. As we move through, I want you to drop those questions in either the chat or the Q&A. Like, don't be scared. Don't be shy. This is your opportunity to ask a grants expert and a grants instructor information about grants. So as we move through, 
drop those questions into the Q&A or the chat. Then I have a bonus surprise for you at the end. So again, don't go anywhere. Now, why is this class important? Because look, we as Black entrepreneurs and leaders of nonprofits, we need access to funding. And it shouldn't always be about loans, right? We want grant money. Grant money is free money, right? However, grant writing is a skill and that skill can be costly, right? A professional grant writer at my level, we charge up to $200 an hour to write a grant. But guess what? You can do this. You, yes, you can do this. You can place your organization in a position to get grant money. Grant writing now is not what it used to be, right? No longer are you sitting in some corner for three months on end writing some 500 page grant application. I know because I've done that before, right? That's what I used to do. Now applications are what, two pages, three pages. There was a grant a couple of weeks ago, $10,000 grant, two questions, 100 words each, right? So grant writing is different, but you have to be able to place yourself in a position to get the money through writing these grants. And no, it's not taking three months. I mean, it can take a matter of hours, right? Now, you will need to know the process. So after having secured over $17 million, there is a process to not just writing grants, but actually winning grants. It's about more than just downloading an application and completing it and sending it off. That's a quick way to get a rejection letter. So what I'm going to do today is show you this process that will place you in a much better position to not only write, but win grants, all right? Now, two different incidents completely changed the landscape of grants. One was COVID-19. So when COVID-19 happened, so many small businesses went under. This is why there's so much money for small businesses, right? We There's always been money for nonprofits, but small businesses, this is why. So when COVID-19 happened, you probably know an organization that had to close, or maybe you had to close your doors, or maybe you at least had to pivot. Well, at the end of the day, the small business, we are the backbone of the U.S. economy. So foundations, the organizations that give grants, and then corporations with foundations, they said, we have to do something about this. And so they started to create pools of grant funding earmarked for small businesses, and especially women-owned businesses. Right, so that was one incident. The next incident that truly pertains to you was the George Floyd incident. So when George Floyd was murdered, sure enough, leaders of foundations and leaders of those corporations with foundations saw what everybody else saw. And they said, we have to do something to address racial injustice in the country. And what did they do? They used what was readily available, cash, right? And so, they started to create pools of grant funding earmarked for minority and black owned organizations. So that's why there is so much money available now for black organizations, more than I've seen in the 16 years that I've been writing grants. I mean, what I'm seeing is incredible. I don't know if you remember that progressive grant a couple of months ago, they were giving away $25,000 to black organizations so that uh, you could buy yourself a vehicle, a car. I mean, what I'm seeing now is amazing. So you're in the right place at the right time to get this money, <laughs> all right? So what we're gonna do now is go through some grant basics. What do you need to know? Grants are not paid back, regardless of what you are reading on social media. I see some really, really bizarre <laughs> information <laughs> about, grants on social media. So they're not, they're not paid back. Now for the next minute, I'm only talking to nonprofits. And let me just say this before I even get into the nonprofit information, everything is being recorded. So, you know, so don't worry, everything's being recorded. What I need for you to know is that I'm here to help you, right? I am here to help you. And so everything's being recorded later today, this evening, you will get a copy of this webinar, right? And it will be free. Like I do not charge for my replays because I am here to help you. So you will get a copy of this replay tonight and you will have the replay forever, 
right? It will not expire so that you have the opportunity to come back to it again and again and again to be helped, okay? So don't worry. I go swiftly. I go fast because there's limited time, but you will get the replay so that you can do your screenshots and have the information available. And you will get a copy of the chat because as we move through, you'll see there is very important information placed into the chat. You'll get everything. All right, so back to the nonprofits. So for the next minute, only talking to nonprofits, you need to get your 501c3. That's your tax exempt charitable organization designation by the IRS. Now, even if you are a church, if I have some churches or maybe faith-based organizations, even if you are a school, you still need to get your 501c3 because it is mandated by foundations, especially by their boards, that they can only give their grant money to nonprofits with 501c3s. Now, the good news is that it used to take the IRS up to six months to process these applications. Now, it's taking about eight weeks. So get your 501c3, people. All right. Now, this is for everybody. I want Everybody look at this slide. This is annual giving just from foundation and corporations. People thought, oh my gosh, there's no money. We've been through a pandemic. Nobody's giving money at all. No, the opposite is true. Did you know that when we go through a pandemic, giving actually increases? And this is what happened. $180 billion, billion would it be? This is in one year right? Why would you not want to use somebody else's money, right, to fund your dream? I want you to think about what you could do with just a little bit of $180 billion. That is a lot of money, right? And look, we're not trying to be greedy. We don't need it all, right? So right now, right now, everybody, everybody into the chat, I want you to put, I just need a little bit. I just need a little bit right now into the chat. I just need a little bit, everybody, into the chat. Think about what you could do. That's right, Fonda. That's right, Tanisha. That's right, Key. Look, uh, Priscilla, Shawnee, Sharla, Stacy. Uh, nobody's trying to be greedy, right? Sherelle, uh, Desiree, do you need it all? Look, Joshua, uh, I just need a piece. I just need a piece of this pie, right? I don't need the whole $180 billion, Joshua, right? Okay, Sherelle, um, Dr. Celestine, can I get some crumbs? Uh, can I get some, look, I'll take some crumbs off of $180 billion, right? Because that is a lot of money, all right? And I really want you to think about what you could do with just, just a small amount, right? Terry says she just needs what she needs to, to run it, okay? She just needs a little bit, right? So what I'm going to do today is show you how to get your share, just a little bit, right, of $180 billion. That's in one year. Don't ever let anybody tell you there's no money. It's not, it's not an issue of whether or not there's money. It's about how do you position yourself to get it, all right? Now, because they call me the Grants Queen, I'm going to be giving you nice cups of tea, cups of tea all afternoon. And this is the first cup. If you use Grammarly right now, give yourself some love in the chat. Grammarly is your friend. Grammarly is a free software editing tool. Look, we know there's five basic writing skills. We're only going to do with editing, rewriting here. Why do you need Grammarly? Because I do not want you submitting grant applications full of grammatical errors. So right now, if you use Grammarly, give yourself some love in the chat. It is a free software editing tool for Word, right? For Excel, for e especially when you're sending emails, even for text messages. It's free. Yes, Desiree loves it. Charlotte loves it. It's free, people. This is homework for you. Download Grammarly onto your computer because no, you cannot submit grant applications for the grammatical errors. Veronica says, yes, she uses it. Danielle says, absolutely, Grammarly rocks, right? Yes. And Veronica says, uh, yes, she's a writer. Terry is like, I'm here for it. Free, download it. That's homework for you. Courtesy of our friends at Grammarly, I want you to also download this article. Improve writing skills dramatically by doing these 15 things. This article is going to make you a better writer. All right. What are we doing? We are preparing to write grants. 
Too many people download the application, complete it, send it off, and wonder why they get a rejection letter. You have to prepare. Next, we need to get our documentation in order. If you are a nonprofit, you need your 501c3. That EIN is for everyone. You need an employer identification number, excuse me, an employer identification number. Whatever you do, really try not to use your social security number just for safety reasons, right? Get your EIN. It is provided to you immediately, immediately. Go through the IRS. That, that's who provides them. Now, you know you need the 501c3 if you are uh, a nonprofit. Now, especially if you are a for-profit, you may need a state certification or a business license, right? Now, it depends on what state you live in. I'm in Ohio. I have a business. That means I need to have a business license. I think Wyoming, you don't need one. Some of the other states, you don't even need one, believe it or not. Why is this important? Because last year, a young lady came on to my webinar. She said, Linda, oh my gosh. She said, I'm a for-profit. I was applying for a grant. The competition was stiff. She said, I was the only one that got the grant money because I was the only one that could show my business license. So more homework for you. Go to your Secretary of State's website, your Secretary of State's website, and find out whether or not you are required in your state to have a state certification, right? That means your articles will say whether or not you are like a uh, uh, what sole proprietor, LLC maybe, partnership, S-Corp. Yes, so homework for some of you, all right? Next. You need a list of your board members. Now, I could do a separate webinar on nonprofits and boards, which I think I've done a few years ago. If you are a nonprofit, it is a requirement that you have a board of directors. Like, there's no getting around that. If you are a nonprofit, it is a requirement that you have a board of directors. So you need a list of your board members. If you are a for-profit, it would be great if you had a board. It's not mandated. So if you do have a board, you need your list. You need a list of your staff. You need letters of support. Who are they uh, being written by? It could be your pastor, your church, your vendors, community leaders, the mayor, politicians, anyone in your community that knows about your organization and your mission, right? And your vision and the work that you've been able to accomplish. Now, you may need an audited financial statement. It just depends on um, the grant application. But if you are currently operating, you will need your profit and loss statement and your balance sheet. So again, you're preparing to apply for grants. So you're pulling this uh, information together so that the process can be quicker. Next, you need an operating budget, all of you, including you startups. Yes, you startups, you need a budget. Why? Because at the end of the day, you have to know how much money is it going to take for me to operate over the course of a year? And once you start completing that operating budget, you might discover funding gaps. So let's say you want to open up a daycare center, right? And you may have money for the lease. You may have money to hire employees. But when you start creating that budget, you might realize, oh, I didn't think about marketing. I need marketing dollars. So when you discover those funding gaps, they are great places for you to apply for grants. All right. Next, you need a list of any other funding sources that you have. Now, this is where organizations go wrong because they think, oh, I don't want this foundation to know that I got grant money from X, Y, Z or no, the opposite is true. You want the organization to know that there are other foundations that believe in your mission enough to fund you, right? That is a win for you. Okay. And no foundation wants to think that they're your sole source of support, that they're like the only ones giving you support. No. So please, if you if you get any other grant money, sponsorship money, even in-kind donations, include that information into the grant application. All right. Now, we're going to go through the typical components of a regular grant application, and I'm going to give you best practices, all right? Make sure you are dropping those questions into the Q&A or the chat. Now, the first section of the grant application that you are going to see is called the summary abstract. 
You will see it first. Whatever you do, do not be fooled. You always write it last because you are going to go through your completed grant application and pull out the most compelling components and drop it into the summary abstract. So you see it first, you always write it last. Next, your mission vision statement. Now, all of you, right, should have a mission statement, all of you. But do you have a vision statement? If you don't, that's more homework for you. Now, what is a vision statement? That's what you would like to have happen in the future if you are attaining your mission. Now, that mission becomes super important because you need to align your mission to the mission statement of the foundation that you're seeking money from. So if you're like laser focused on K through 12 education, you need to make sure that you are reaching out to foundations that also have a passion for K through 12 education. And also you don't change your mission based on the foundation that you're trying to secure funding from. Your mission is static, it doesn't change. You need to find a foundation that aligns to your mission, all right? Next, the history section. Now, don't leave this blank. Even you startups, because guess what? You have a history too. I want you to write about the impetus or the catalyst for you starting your organization. I'll give you an example, a retired principal at a high school. When she was a principal, her students were underperforming in reading and math. And she knew that once she retired, she wanted to start this tutoring academy to go back and help them. Well, the reason, right, for her starting the academy, the history, was her experiences as, as a principal, seeing that her students were underperforming and she wanted to help them. So those experiences really led her to opening up the organization. Therefore, it is a part of the organization's history. All right. Now, next, leadership. Now, this is easy. Your CEO your COO, right? Executive, excuse me, executive director. Some of you will have an ED, but you always include your board, right? Because your board is very much a part of your leadership team, all right? Now, next, this is a section where you can make yourself shine. Now, we often tend to not want to toot our own horn. This is not the section for you to be shy. What I want you to do when you are describing your organization is think about one word, impact. What has been the impact of your organization on those for whom you serve? And I want you to use real numbers. Let's say you have a homeless ministry. How many homeless people have you placed in shelters? Let's say you have an online coaching business where you coach those in career development. Well, how many people have you led to their future careers? Use real numbers and really talk about your track record of working with whatever your target population is, right? The people that you serve the most. And this becomes critical. I'll share a really quick story. Three weeks ago, a young lady was taking my webinar and she said, Linda, oh my gosh. She said, I lost out on hundreds of thousands of dollars in a one grant that I was applying for. It was a government grant. She said they loved my program uh, because she asked them why she didn't get the money. And that's a tip for all of you. you. Always ask why you didn't get the money. She asked and they told her, your your application, the way you explained, your program was great. What you wanted to, to do with the target population and your transformation with them, as you envisioned it, was fantastic. But they said you had no experience working with the target population. So how would we know that you would be successful? And she said, Linda, I had decades of experience working with the target population and I didn't put it in the application. So always put your experience of working with who you want to serve in the application. Write it, write about your success rate, those success factors, use real numbers, because this section of the application can really set you apart and have a lot to do with whether or not you secure the funding. Next, you have to rethink how you see your organization because you have to write as if you are addressing an issue 
all of you, it doesn't matter what type of organization you have, whether you have a product or a program or a service-based organization, you have to write as if you are addressing an issue and there's always an issue. I'll give you an example. A bakery wants to locate in a downtown community. Now you might be thinking she's making a red velvet cake all day. What issue is she resolving? Well, maybe she's a vegan bakery and she's addressing the issue that vegans really don't have a lot of great choices for baked items and, and places to even buy baked goods. Or maybe she's addressing the issue of economic development because where she wants to locate, there's been so many other failed businesses. Or maybe she's addressing the issue of her surrounding businesses that will be her customers because they haven't had a great bakery in years. So rethink how you see your organization because whatever that area of interest is that you are addressing will lead you to the funder or the foundation that wants to give you money because why? They're giving funding to organizations addressing that area of interest that's near and dear to them, right? Now, how do you find out what these areas of interest are from these foundations? 90% of foundations, they don't even have a website. Well, this is more tea for you. It's the 990 form. Like, don't sleep on the 990 form. It is a gold mine of information. The 990 is a tax document that all nonprofits have to submit to the Internal Revenue Service, including foundations. And you want to look through that foundation's 990, you're going to get contact information. But if you scroll to the end of that 990, there's going to be a list of organizations that they've donated to. And you're going to be looking for similar organizations as yours, right? So if you have an equestrian program and you use horses to help help veterans, you should be looking for any other animal related organizations that they've donated to because if you find them ding 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 that might be your foundation right now how do you get these 990s you could certainly pay for many different organizations subscriptions that will give you access to 990s but not after today this is more tea for you projects that propublica.org forward slash nonprofit this website will allow you to download and review any 990 that has been filed by any organization in recent years. All right, so don't sleep on the 990 forms. Now, next section, target population. I have been consulting with organizations for what almost 16 years now. And I can tell you, this is a big issue. Who are you helping? You cannot help everybody. I know you're passionate about your work and wanting to help people, but you can't help everybody because that is what will spread you thin and burn you out. You need one or two target populations. Some of you have seven, eight, nine, ten, right? I want you to think about the word best, B-E-S-T. Who would best be served by your organization? Because it can't be everybody because foundations, the foundations that, that give grant money, they give grant money according to target populations because they're interested, they're invested in helping specific populations. So you have to define who yours is going to be. One or two, right? Maybe it's gender, you help women. Maybe it's ethnicity and you serve African-Americans. Maybe it's income and you serve those that live below the federal poverty line. Or maybe you have that daycare center. You're looking for families with kids under the age of five. Anytime you need any kind of demographical information, don't sleep on the census. The U.S. Census, Fast Facts, this website is incredible. You need educational attainment of your, of your uh, potential target population, right? Ethnicity, income, it's, it's amazing. And guess what? It is free. So don't sleep on the census. Use this particular website whenever you need uh, regional or demographical information. All right, now... If you have written a grant, give me a yes. Give me a yes. Give me a yes in the chat. Oh, I see some yeses. Excellent, 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 excellent. Now, I want you to ask yourself, were you able to truly tell a story? Because grant applications are all about telling a story. 
were you able to show that you were afforded the opportunity to change some lives or were you able to show that you had outcomes achieved? You have to appeal to the emotions of these foundation leaders. And there's almost no better way to do that than using real examples, testimonials, and case studies. And I want you to use video. All of you should have a video testimonial on your homepage or plural, several. And this is not difficult. You can literally have your client use this little device here, right? 30 seconds. Oh, this is the best cupcake I've ever had in my life. Or, wow, her career development services really changed the trajectory of my career. And if you want to do a compilation video, really shouldn't be any more than three minutes. But yes, the home page of your website. Notice I said website and not social media. Now, if you want to include some videos on your social media pages, that's fine. But I, I know after having worked with foundations for 16 years now, the first place they're going to go is to your website. So yes, you're going to need a website and no, it should not have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be complicated, but that should be your footprint to show your projects and your programs and your impact and your testimonials, right? So this can be done. And it does not have to be costly. That's like a pet peeve of mine. When I see some of the pricing, um, you know, that these small organizations are being charged for just a simple, a simple website. So as a matter of fact, I, if you need a referral for a website to be created, I would be happy to help you, right? I know web developers and web designers that look like us that are phenomenal at what they do and they're very affordable. I would be happy to give you a recommendation if you want one drop your email into the Q&A, or if you're going to put into the chat, make sure you put it to the host and the panelists so that your email remains private. So put it to the host and the panelists, it will come directly to me, or drop your email into the q and I will be happy to give you a referral to the web developers that I know that are, they're phenomenal. All right, so you have a decision to make. Are you asking for operating or program project money? Like we love operating dollars right? Because we get to decide where to put that grant money, IT, the lease, salaries, but only about 32% of foundations actually provide general operating support, right? The overwhelming majority of grants have to be utilized for a particular program or project. Now, here is the takeaway. You must apply to multiple foundations for the same exact need. Why? Because grants are not guaranteed. And if anyone is saying that to you, a grant writer, an organization is telling you that they can guarantee you grant money, I want you to do one of those military turns and uh, run any other direction because you're about to be scammed. All right? This is critical. You need to apply to multiple foundations for the same need. Now, let's say you need $10,000 to hire a contractor. You should be applying to Foundation A for $10,000 and Foundation B for $10,000, right? Now, what if you get $20,000? What if you get all the money? And you say, oh, I only asked for $10,000 on each application. I got both. Oh, I'm going to have to give $20,000 back. No, we don't give grant money back. We don't give grant money back. Now, what you could do is just hire another contractor so that you can still have the $10,000 spent on each application or double the hours of the contractor so that you're expending $20,000 and that way you can show the $10,000 on each application. But whatever you do, apply to multiple foundations for the same need. You should never just be one and done. You should never just be applying to one foundation and that's it. Now, when you are describing your project, keep in mind talking about why you have been successful or why will you be successful? Why you, is this something new? Is there a need in the market? Use your supporting research, but whatever you do, write as if you are addressing an issue, all right? Now, this is critical. I would say for the last eight or nine years, I've seen this question on every grant application. You need to be working with community partners. You're not expected to work in a silo. Foundations literally prefer that you partner with other organizations when they give out grant money. This does not have to be difficult. 
it's tax season. Let's say you have an accounting firm. For one hour out of the month, you could give a free tax talk at your local library. And I think libraries are criminally underutilized. You're going to get the attention of the community because you know that library is going to promote your tax talk. And you know libraries, I think they have everybody's email address, seriously. Another issue is that you lack visibility. In my consulting with organizations, this is a real issue. Nobody knows who you are. People, even in your own community, do not know who you are or what you provide or the services or opportunities right, that you offer. So by connecting with a very well-respected organization in your community, it ends up raising your level of visibility, right? So when you partner with libraries or HBCUs or very well-respected organizations like the YMCA, YWCA Boys and Girls Club, it raises your level of visibility, right? And it also puts you in a better place to get grant funding. And the partnerships, there doesn't need to be an exchange of, of money. It depends on the nature of the partnership, right? So you have to work through that. That bakery will be passing out flyers about an event planner, right, at her store. The event planner will be using the services of the bakery, but will also be passing out flyers about the bakery at her store, right? So it can be as simple as distributing information about uh, another local business. But whatever you do, try to establish a relationship with a very well-known entity. So homework for all of you, write down the names of five, five organizations, five organizations that you're, you're going to pursue for some kind of partnership. All right. Now, next, you're asking for free grant money. So you know you have to talk about what you think your results are going to be if you get the grant money your current results and what you think your future results are going to be. Therefore, you're going to be forecasting a bit. And I do not want you to be afraid of that F word, right? Because this can be simple. Now, some grant applications ask for one of these. Some ask for all three. Outputs, outcomes, impact. I'll explain the difference. Outputs, immediate results. You give me the grant money, this is what's going to happen. Outcomes usually occur maybe six months to a year down the road, then impact happens maybe six months to a year after your outcomes. I'll give you an example. That daycare wanted to open, they asked for a $20,000 grant from a foundation. They said, if you give us the grant money, our output will be, we will open, we're ready, we found a great location, but we need our last $20,000. And if we open, we will serve 100 families and 250 children. Now, as a result of us opening in this great location, serving 100 families and 250 children, we anticipate, we forecast that in six months, our outcome will be, we will grow by 40% and add 24 seven services. Now, because we anticipate growing by 40% and adding 24 seven services, we anticipate, we forecast that a year from that moment, we will expand to two locations. So you see how they stair up. So now you'll be able to answer all three if the application asks for all three. Next, you know you need goals, right? You are asking for grant money. So you have to lay out what you think will occur, You know what your expectations are, what you believe will happen, what you want to pursue if you get the grant money. Now, they can't be regular goals. They have to be SMART goals. Most of you know what SMART goals are. They're specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and timely. Now, let's say I have a literacy program. And my goal is I want to reduce the poverty rate in Cleveland. Well, that's not a SMART goal. No, a SMART goal would say I want to reduce the poverty rate by 5% in Cleveland for Hispanic children under the age of five within a five-year time frame. Right now, into the chat. What did I do? What did I do? What did I do? How did I change that goal into a SMART goal? Everybody into the chat. What did I do? I got specific, Gary. What else did I do? Ding, ding, ding. Donnell got it. Everything was measurable. I created everything as measurables. Absolutely. Look at this. 5%, right? Cleveland, Hispanic children, under the age of five, five-year time frame. Anytime you need to change a goal into a SMART goal, 
you add data and stats. All right, now, the foundation will wanna know who's leading the program, who's leading the, the product or the service, and it's probably you and that's fine. Just know you have to update your bio and your resume. So yes, some of you will need to do that and that will be homework for some of you. Update those bios and update those resumes. It's all about accountability, really. They wanna make sure there are qualified people leading the organization. Now, this is the budget for the grant. This is how you are going to showcase ways in which you will be expending the grant money and you have to itemize your expenses. So let's say you want $50,000 to hire an executive director. You can't just write any 50 grand for an ED. You have to be specific. Is it a contracted executive director? If so, how much money are you going to be paying per hour? How many hours will they be working a week? How many weeks out of the year? If it's a salary executive director, you have to split up how much money will be going towards benefits, how much will be going towards the salary. So just itemize your expenses and be specific. The how, the explanations go into the budget narrative. The actual figures go into the budget. All right. Now, oh, sustainability. I love sustainability because even if you get the money in year one, there's no guarantee that you're going to get money in year two. There just isn't. So you have to write in that application. If you don't get the grant money in year two, you are going to be able to sustain sustainability, sustain your program in year two, even if you don't get the grant money, right? Because organizations, the, the foundations that give you money, they don't want to be placed in a position of thinking that they have to give you money in year two. Because if not, there goes the program because you didn't have a plan. There goes the project. No, you have to write in the application. Look, if we don't get the money in year two, we're going to be okay because we have a plan to sustain the program. Now, we're going to do a little activity really quickly. I want you to think about the high school. The high school got the $20,000 in year one to pay for the tutoring academy, right? But they had to write in to the application if they didn't get the grant money in year two, they were still going to be okay. They had a plan to sustain being able to pay the $20,000 in year two. Into the chat. What do you think they wrote? Like, how do you think a high school could write in an application ways that they're going to be able to, to pay $20,000 for a program? What do you think they wrote? Into the chat. This is a high school. How do you think they could write? Okay, we're going to be. Yeah, exactly, Alicia. Fundraisers. How about the old bake sale, right? A car wash, uh, Shamika, yes. Stacy, absolutely. Fundraising. Uh, candy, yes. Oh, maybe, pay I love that, Terry. Paid workshops, absolutely. Right, recall, going out to get sponsorships, absolutely. Yes, get a volunteer to help raise money, Dr. Celestine, absolutely, right? So you have to be creative, when you think about ways in which you write into that application, avenues that you're still going to be able to pay for whatever that product or program or service is in year two, even if you don't get the grant money. All right. Now, some of you are thinking, um, this is nice, Linda, but no, like I, I don't have time. I just don't have the time. I have a question for all of you, and I do want an answer into the chat. Do you have time to get free money? Like, do you have time to get free money? So into the chat, does anybody have time to get free money? I'm seeing some yeses. I'm seeing some absolutes. I'm, I'm saying you better make time, okay? I'm seeing some I uh, will make the time, most definitely. I am resigned so that I can. She, she resigned so that she can, okay? I, look, Dr. Lessing said, I'm retired and ready, okay? So what I need you to do, if you have time to get free money, I need you to make just a little bit of time for the process of getting the free money, right? I need you to just have a little bit of time allotted to the process to get the free money, right? Because I know you want to be successful, but guess what? You're going to have to create some relationships. Yes, you are. Now, if you don't take anything else away from this webinar, this is it. Like, this is it. This is as important as anything you will ever 
right into a grant application, you have to meet with that foundation first. You have to start building relationship. And this is not complicated. We're talking about a 30 minute Zoom meeting. We're not even talking about meeting in person unless maybe that foundation is in the same vicinity as you, then yes, you can meet in person. But we're talking about 30 minute Zoom meetings. I, I know I've set up probably a thousand of these because in that meeting, you're going to learn more information about the grant that's not on their website. And they will learn more information about you and your program that they'll never be able to get through your website because they're 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 with you. They see you, they see your passion. And you talking about, right? Your your mission and your your program and your products and your services. And if they like you, I've seen this often. They will literally guide you as to what to put in the application so that they can approve it, right? I set up one of these meetings a few weeks ago between a client and a foundation. Foundation never heard of my client before. 30 minute Zoom, $30,000. A few weeks earlier, set up a meeting with a family foundation that didn't even have a website, right? Remember, 90% don't. That was like a two hour session, but my client got $30,000 and a guarantee a guarantee of $30,000 a year. Now, foundations can guarantee grant money because it's their money. Grant writers cannot, right? But you're going to have to change your mindset about winning because things are different now. Black organizations are getting grant money. They're winning grants every day, right? So why not you? Just place yourself in position, right? to get the money because black organizations are getting grant money every single day. Those are some do's, these are some don'ts. Don't ask for too much money when you approach a funder for the first time. Now, typically, you know the amount of the grant, but there's two. there are two foundations that oftentimes will not tell you the amount of the, the grant. You have to tell them the amount that you're asking for. One is your local community foundation. We'll talk about them in a minute. And the next are your utility foundations. Oh my goodness. The utility foundations, those pockets are deep, right? Your gas companies, your electricity companies, your power companies, right? Now, my suggestion is that you don't go in asking for $100,000 because you won't get it the first time. Be conservative. Ask for anywhere between $5,000 and $30,000 the first time. Now, the second time, second year, sky's the limit but be conservative the first year, all right? And then don't leave questions blank because you might get a rejected application uh, because especially if it's an online portal, uh, a blank question might think that the application is um, incomplete. It might read the application as being incomplete because of course, so much of this is uh, automated now. Now, remember I said it's important to meet with the foundation. This is what you do. You are going to send an email introducing yourself and asking for a meeting. In that email, you are describing your organization. You're talking about your statement of need, right? What are you addressing? Who are you serving in your target population? You are talking about how your mission aligns to the mission of that foundation, right? Because that's why they're going to give you a meeting because your mission is aligned. You're providing the types of services or products that they want to fund. You're not asking for money. You're asking for a meeting. Now you may get the right name of a person, but do you have the right email address? I do not want you sending this email to like one of those generic, you know, info at abcfoundation.orgs. It'll probably go into the hemisphere and never come back. You need a real email address. And now I've been giving you tea all afternoon. Look, this is a teapot here. Get email.io. It is amazing. Do you know that it will give you the email address of almost anybody around the world in an established organization? I use it all the time. I've gotten so many emails, people in Italy, Germany, France, you name it. And it's free for like the first 10. And then it's a subscription based. So use your 10 wisely because if you send this intro, email to a real person with a real email, oh, you will get a response, all right? Now, this is how you find the money. This is how you do your grant research to find organizations that match with you. The Foundation Directory Online is the leading source of grants in the U.S., right? But 
They give you information about the organizations that provide the grants, not the actual grant itself, but organizations. Let's say you plug in, you want to find organizations that fund uh, nonprofits that serve the homeless, right? That homelessness would maybe be a key word, but they're going to give you organizations. Now, this is what, $50 a month for the subscription, or you could go to your local library and get completely free access, right? Grants.gov, you know, that's the single source for federal grants. The Lilly Foundation is the largest funder of religious organizations. So if I have any churches with me, right? Any faith-based organizations? Yes, there's grant money available for you. Look at Grant Go for people, they're $9 a month to get you a grant list from Grant Gopher. Grant Watch, I love them. They're about $20 a week. Now they give you not only information about the organization providing the grant, but they give you the actual grant information, right? They give you a synopsis of the grant. They give you a contact person, right? With a name and an email address, right? And a link to the grant application. So they're $20 a week, or you can get a deal at $50 a month or $200 for the whole year. Speaking of $200 for the whole year, you can get GrantStation. Now, I think they do one of the best jobs of, of really allowing you the opportunity to feed it specific information about your program, who you service, where you service, right? Your particular target uh, population. I think they probably do one of the best jobs. They're $200 for the whole year. Now, all of you, homework. When we're done, sign up to urbanawarenessusa.org. They are a Black-owned organization. They also provide lists of grants. And I tell you, they they probably release 10 to 15 new grants every single week, right? They're constantly pushing out information about new grant opportunities. Uh, tell them Linda sent you, and they're free to sign up. So whatever you do, please sign up to their newsletter. They're amazing. And yes, they're Black-owned. Now, I just want to quickly go through Grant Station. If you're interested in Grant Station, they're like $200 for um, the year you can sign up through them. But this is how you do your research. And by the way, if you are here with me from an international location, this search is for you as well. These are not just grants for people here in the U.S. If you live in the U.S. and you serve a population in Africa, yes, you can search for grants. If you live in Africa, and serve a population in Africa, you can search for grants, right? So these are international searches as well. Now, look to the right there, areas of interest. Now for every box you see, there's probably 20 to 30 drop down boxes because they get really specific, right? And you put in your information, your target populations, who are you serving, veterans, homeless, youth, right? You press a button, it will give you a list of grant opportunities. Now, I want to say a couple of words about geographical scope. Many of you are leaving money on the table. Do you know it is much, much easier for you to get local funding than it is national funding? Look local first. Many of you see these large dollar grants that are nation, national, excuse me, in scope, and that's what you go for when there's like money in front of you in your own city. So start local. It's easier to get local funding. And yes, Google your local community foundation when we are done, all of you, and meet with them. Almost every community has a local community foundation. We're outside of Cleveland. We have several. and I mean, we have literally the largest in the country with the Cleveland Foundation. But Google your local community foundation and meet with them. Now, most of the time, they only give to nonprofits. But even if you are a for-profit, meet with them anyway. Had a young lady meet with her local community foundation as a for-profit, and they told her, we really don't have grants for you because we only give grants to nonprofits. But she said, Linda, oh my gosh. Because we met, they gave me the names of five organizations that they believe would invest in my company. This is what happens when you meet with the foundations and establish a relationship, right? So local community foundation, Google and meet with them, right? However, don't disregard the national grant makers as well. Just because an organization is headquartered in California does not mean that it's not giving you money and you're in Michigan. So what I'm saying, do both. Search locally and search nationally. And with GrantStation, you hit that button. It will give you a list of grants. Now, I told you I had some information for you about some available grants that are either currently open or upcoming. Support Black charities. Definitely, if you are a Black nonprofit, 
they have a list of grants. The Skip Perseverance Grant for small businesses. Do you have a beauty brand? Do you maybe have a hair salon or maybe you create products for ethnic hair? There's a grant open right now. Do you have a brick and mortar? Do you have a storefront? There's a grant for you right now. The Grants for Main Street grant. LISC is geared solely for Black for-profits. That grant is opening soon. The Shea Moisture grant, if you have a hair care salon, that grant is opening soon. The Black Chambers of Commerce and American Express, they are going to be reopening their grant. Do you make films? Are you a filmmaker? Documentary, right? Or even feature film? Yes, the Ford Foundation, one of the largest foundations in the world, they have a grant for you. You're in transportation, DLT, NASE, MBDA. You work with youth conflict resolution. You work in research and development. Maybe you have a, a new product, a new invention, SBIR. Maybe you want something more than just a grant. You want coaching and mentorship. Northwestern has a program. Now you might be saying, Linda, I'm teeny tiny. There's no grants for me. I'm too small. Look at Amarillo. They're in Texas. All they do is provide grant money for really small organizations. Now you also might be saying, Linda, it's just me. I don't even have a staff. I'm not even paying anybody. You don't need an org chart. You don't need some huge organizational chart, right? You need impact. Look at Amarillo. They give money to all volunteer nonprofits. I know all volunteer nonprofits, right? They get grant money, right? Your faith-based mustard seed only gives money to faith-based organizations. You want black investors, go to Harlem Capital. You're a church HBCU, Lilly Foundation. You may be a startup, right? Maybe you're starting. There's funds for you too. Busy and Sky's the Limit. They both have grants for startups. And then Give Butter is just a really great um, website that you can go to that has so much information about grants for Black organizations. Now, I know there's a lot of women with me today, so this slide is for you. Whatever you do, go to helloalice.com, subscribe. They have so much information on grants for small businesses. Now, there's two grant lists I have here. One is by Nerd Wallet. Um, under Black Women and then Grants for Black Women, that one's under Bank Rate. Go to those two sites. Fearless Fund, they have a grant. Visa, they have a grant. Cartier, the jewelry company, they have a phenomenal program. Amber Grants for Women, they give away $10,000 every single month. Sports Foundation, you want an angel investor? 37angels.com. I want you to go to that site even if you don't need an investor because they typically have a list of funds for female founders. Last time I looked, it was a list of like 50 or 60. Tori Birch, this program is open right now, right? They have a women of color grant program. All right. Next. Right now into the chat, let me know what comes to your mind when you think about banks and money, banks and money, banks and money, banks and money, loans, Yes, loans. I see lots of loans, loans, credit. Did you see that? Did you know, rather, that banks, right? Your banks are some of the largest providers of grant money in the United States. Yes, grant money. You've been going to the wrong person. You've probably been going to your branch manager or loan officer. You typically have to go to a VP, like a VP of economic development or VP of what is it, community reinvestment or community development? One of those three and meet with them. I'm giving you three hot leads, but before I do, just so you know, the bank does not have to be your bank, right? Search for a bank with a really good presence in your community. Maybe it has a regional office or a headquarters office and meet with them. We're in Northeast Ohio. We have so many banks that give grant money. Key Bank, PNC Bank, all right, so these three hot leads, Bank of America, that deadline is in June. They give to for-profits and non-profits. Wells Fargo, they give to for-profits and non-profits. TD Banks, they give predominantly to non-profits, all right? Now, remember I said there is so much money now available, especially for Black-owned organizations or Black-led non-profits, that I want to do something about it. Now, I realize I can only help so many organizations, right? Writing one grant at a time. So what did I do? I created an online grant writing course. Like this is how I secured $17 million and I want you to be able to do the same. Truly, 
This is like all of my 16 years of grant writing is in this course. And yes, you do get my coaching. It is truly a proven step-by-step -step path to funding, right? I want you to be successful, but maybe without always bootstrapping or asking family and friends for money or just uh, wondering, when are you going to open? How long will you be able to stay open? Because there's free money available. There, There's money available from other people. Why not use other people's money to fund your organization, right? And you'll see in a moment that you, yes, you as a Black organization can win twenty, thirty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 or a lot more, all right? I teach you the best grant research techniques, right? I show you how to find the organizations that want to give you money and then how do you approach them? And yes, I teach you how to write every part of this grant narrative because I want you to be able to write grant and not hire a grant writer. And if, even if you want to hire a grant writer, you absolutely can. I will counsel you on that too, so that you don't get scammed. All right. But at the end of the day, nobody's going to be able to tell your story like you. Yes, it's, it's, it's a little bit of effort, but the equity is amazing because you're using somebody else's free money, right? You get 12 modules, 35 lessons. I know people learn differently. They are visual learners, right? So every lesson starts with a video. And not only do you get the videos, but you get actual lessons. This is not just a course of videos. You get tasks. I'm asking you questions. And as you answer, you are creating a phenomenal grant template that you are then using to apply for grants, right? And you can either use Word, you can answer the questions in Word, or I give you a free grant template if you want to use it. And I give you workbooks. Every single lesson is downloadable. Even the videos are downloadable. The fun quizzes, yes, they're fun and silly, but they really help you to remember, right? And you know I'm going to give you grant examples. Every grant example I wrote and every grant example won money. And then I do something nobody else in the country is doing. I give you a list of over 450 organizations that are providing grant money. And we're currently updating this list. When we're done, it will be over 600, over 600 organizations providing funds. And I provide something that has totally changed the success of the students. It is a private Facebook group. And I have to say, as the young people say, that Facebook group is lit. It really is. I'm so proud of the students because everybody helps everybody else. There is no competition. It's about collaboration. I drop grants constantly. I'm dropping new grants in the group. But you know what? The students drop more grants than I do. Ojeda, I tell you two weeks ago, she dropped a link that had over 100 grants in it because everybody is wanting everybody else to win. And then I give you another bonus, an hour of group coaching so that you can come up to the mic, let us know how we can help you where you're located. I address you, I give you help, but also because there are typically other students on the call, you get information and help from them. But guess what? This is not one and done. This is every month. Every month I give a group coaching session. The next one is, is Monday, which you absolutely don't want to miss because those are marathon sessions. I say an hour, but they're usually over two hours. Now, this is not what you're paying, by the way. This is what the course is worth because it's been audited three times. 12 modules, 35 lessons worth $3,549. Your intro videos are worth $599. The list of funders, which will be over 600 in a couple of weeks, upwards of $1,000 is worth with all of the research. Yes, you get workbooks and planners because you have to stay organized. I give you a grant tracker worth $350. So yes, the course itself is worth $4,997. That's not some number I'm just throwing out. That is an accurate number because the weekend university courses that are for grant writing are $5,000 or more and you don't get anywhere near what I get. And you may have access for what, two months maybe? You certainly don't have access to the professors. My course is on another level because I've been, hate, I've been excuse me, paid to create those grant applications so I know what kind of questions typically they're asking you. So the retail value is $4,997, but that is not what you're paying. Like my regular price is $9.97 all day. I 
honestly try to keep it discounted to $497. That is what people pay every day because I just want to make it affordable. So it's $497 every day. That's what people pay, but that is not what you are going to pay because you came onto the webinar. You could have been somewhere else at noon letting me know you need the help. So guess what? For the next three days, three days only, you get an additional 50% off. Yes, you get this course, this $5,000 course for $247. One payment, like one and done, you get everything, the course, the Facebook group, the grant coaching, everything. One payment, $247. If you need extra help, I can give that to you. You can make two payments. One now of $137.50 and then another payment in a month. Now, if you make the two months uh, worth of payments, you don't need a code. But to get the cheapest amount for $247, that 50% off, you have to use this code, uh, MAR219. Now, the course never expires. I, I have to say that again because people are always shocked at that. My course never expires. When I say I'm here to help you, I'm here to help you. The course never expires. I didn't even get to the letter of inquiry. That's important. There's a storytelling lesson. I teach you how to write better, right? And then you have every part of the narrative, $247, one and done. And oh my goodness, it is tax deductible. Yes, it's tax deductible. So if you want to get the course, you hit the link in the chat, it will take you to this page here, right? You hit purchase, it will take you to this page. Look there to the left, right? As I said, it's $497. You happen to have a coupon and a bit coupon. So when you put in your coupon code, it's going to take $250 off of the price, right? Like that's the that's the cheapest price that there is, $247. You have that code. Now, look at this little block here. That's you and me. That is a strategy session. We do a deep dive. When you leave, you leave with complete clarity because I go through your mission, your vision, your strategy, your infrastructure, where and how you should be looking for grants. We even look locally and nationally for a few grants for you, right? You leave with the session notes, you leave with the video, right? It's normally $495 because literally you leave with complete clarity. I can't say that enough. This is the only time it's discounted to $195 is if you buy it with the course. Now, even if you pay that $137.50, you can still add on the 195. And by the way, if you want to pay the 137.50, you still hit the link. You come to this page. Now you're looking at that little black drop down arrow. You hit it, and you will see the drop down menu. You make the first of the two payments, 137 dollars and 50 cents. And by the way, I don't drip my course. You get everything, even if you only pay the 137.50. You get everything right now. I don't wait. You don't have to wait. You still get everything right now. Look at Whitney. I have to look. I have to talk about Whitney. Whitney surprised me three weeks ago. Now, Whitney did what I'm suggesting that you do. Look locally to your power company. She did. She got $40,000 from the Southern Power Fund. Then she got $50,000 because she went nationally. She got $50,000 from the National Birth Equity Collaborative. I thought it was great. I was so happy for Whitney. $90,000 right? In 2023, then she she came on, she surprised me about three weeks ago. She's at Linda. My total for 2023, $200,000. Like this is real. She got $200,000 in grant money. Um, Doesn't Whitney look like us? Yes. Oh my gosh. Then I got this, this little Facebook post from Michelle. She said, Miss PB, this is Michelle Richardson and Annette Thompson of Tranquility Point therapeutic massage in Charlotte, North Carolina. They have a massage company. We both wanted to share our wonderful, fabulous news. Our small business was awarded a $20,000 grant. We are so very thankful and grateful for your course. It's been life-changing for our business. The same day, Ida sends me a post, Mustard Seed Enterprises, remember I said faith-based organizations can get grant money, she got $20,000 and guess what? Ida got another $20,000 the last week in December. And then Christina, may I share that I am so grateful for Linda. I would not have had the confidence to follow through on applying for grants if it wasn't for her grant writing course. The depth of information provided is unmatched. From my experience, I won my very first grant to grow my business and I am so grateful. 
she got not only $10,000, but a year's mentorship. Reverend Chris is over $35,000. Natalie Payne, I'm a graduate of one of your classes and was able to secure a $50,000 grant for a local church this past summer. People literally take the course because it's so in-depth and become grant writers. Look at Quintina, right? She got her first grant. A lot of these people never thought they would ever get grant money. And oh my gosh, April. April created a social justice game because she, she never wanted there to be another Tamir Rice. It was to help teenagers know what to do when they are approached by the police. She presented to Ben and Jerry's. Don't we like Ben and Jerry's ice cream? Did you know that they have a phenomenal foundation? She presented to them. They said, well, this really isn't within the framework of our you know, grant requirements, but this game is incredible. Here's like $1,000. Like you can't get grant money if you don't approach the grantors. And then she kept going. Whatever you do, if you win grant money, don't stop, right? And if you're going to be in a pitch competition, this is a great course. April called me. She said, Linda, I'm getting ready to enter a pitch competition. She said, I know what to do. Your course taught me how to tell my story, how to share the information. She said, I'm ready. She came in second place. She beat out 100 competitors. And guess what? Her second place, $9,000, right? Uh, these are all black folks, right? So yes, this is possible. Oh, and they're all in the Facebook group. They're all students. They're all in the Facebook group. You can come in and ask them any questions that you want, right? You know, this is all real. Now, I'm going to stop sharing because it is Q&A time. It is Q&A time. All right. Now, I'm going to start with the Q&A box. And then I'm going to the webinar chat, right? But before I even start in that Q&A box, I have to ask all of you, all of you to do this, right? Because it's go time, it's already March. Sometimes you have to literally manifest what you are wanting, put it into the atmosphere, put it into the universe, write down your vision. You have to get it out of you. Right now, everybody, everybody into this chat. I want you to write, I'm ready to get grant money. I'm ready to get grant money. Everybody right now into the chat. I'm ready to get grant money, right? Because this is real. There are black folks getting grant money every day. Every day, like why not you if you know how to? That's right, Larissa, Shamika, Tanisha, LaQuery, Terry, Gary, right? Lisa, Keela, Stacey, I'm ready to get grant money. Fonda, Esther, yes. Dr. Celestine, Sherelle. Rosalie, Alicia, Roslyn, Fred. Yeah, Shawnee, write this down. Veronica, Shelly, is it Derek? Desiree, I'm sorry. I am know I'm butchering names. I'm so sorry. Priscilla, Keith, Rodney, Joshua, right? Write this down, Angel. I'm ready to get this grant money. Look, I would love to be your coach, right? I know a little bit about what I'm talking about. But even if you don't buy the course, whatever you do, please do not be in this position a month from now. Looking around, trying to, Find out like who gave this person grant money? How did she get grant money? How did he get grant money? Somebody gave them information and they moved on it, right? So whatever you do, do something to move yourself forward. Don't be in the same position a month from now. It's go time. It's March. Did you know that there's more money the first part of the year than any other part? Because organizations like Verizon and Walmart, they will tell you when our funds have been exhausted for the year, that's it. The money is gone, right? So please, whatever you do, don't wait. Write this off. My gosh, you're not even paying for it. You pay for it initially, but you write it off. It is a business expense. It is an educational business expense. And yes, you get a certificate. You get a certificate, right? So whatever you do, move yourself forward, all right? You are getting a, a $5,000 course for $247 that you write off, right? Okay, so we're going to look in the Q&A. So I have everybody's email. I will absolutely send you the web developers uh, and the web designers. Absolutely. All right, let's see. I wanted to know how this could help me as a writer. It was That was an early question. So I went through the whole process, the entire webinar. So when you get the replay, you'll get the replay tonight. Speaking of replays, 
first of all, let's give Irene some love. Irene is in the motherland. Irene is in Africa. Uh, Irene, if you could drop my two email addresses into the webinar chat, everybody, please. I don't know if you've heard what's going on with Yahoo and Gmail. Please put these two emails into your safe senders list. You will get your replay from one of these email addresses. And I just don't want to go into your spam. So when you get the replay, Veronica, look through the replay, take a screenshot of your slides, and it will literally help you to um, place yourself in a better position. But the course, absolutely. The course, I teach you how to write grants. Like that's what the course is doing. But it's not just teaching you how to write grants, right? Like I explained over the course of the last hour and a half, it's more than that. You have to know how to research to get the organizations that are aligned with you. I teach you how to do that. And I teach you how to meet with them. The Facebook group is everything, right? And I have to just share one little short story that happened about the Facebook group. A young lady came in. She wanted to hire a grant writer. Great. Let me help you. But somebody approached her and said, if you give me $250, I'm going to write all these grants for you. And they started asking for her bank account, her social security number, her routing number. And she came into the Facebook group. She said, Linda, something doesn't look right. I didn't even get a chance to get to her. Like the other students like converge on their post. They're like, wait a minute, let us research this company for you. And of course they were scammers. And I told her no. But that's the community that I have. Everybody cares about whether or not you're successful at getting this grant money just like them. And if you need something reviewed, right? A couple of weeks ago, we reviewed a pitch deck. A young lady dropped her pitch deck. And uh, she asked for someone to review it. Like I think seven or eight students reviewed it. I came in to review it. If you're writing your grant, you can drop in components. You can drop in pieces, ask people to review it on a volunteer basis, right? And typically they will. There's a file, right? System where you drop your information to the Facebook group. And if I'm available, I absolutely will. Look, I'm not one of those creators where you buy something from them and they disappear. People know you'll be sick of seeing this face in the Facebook group because I'm in there all the time. All right. Let's see. Okay. So yes, as a writer, it will absolutely um, help you. What banks are good for nonprofit uh, bank accounts? Like I can't give you specific banks that are good for nonprofit bank, uh, bank accounts. I can give you recommendations for banks that will uh, provide grant money, which I gave you three. Uh, oftentimes, it depends on your local community. It's different for every community. But if you're looking for uh, nationwide banks, I can give you recommendations like I did here. You know, there's Bank of America. There's Wells Fargo, right? There's TD Banks, right? Chase does some, you know, some giving. But it's always best to look locally first. Always best to look locally. Also, consider your credit unions. Now, the credit unions don't necessarily give grants, but they will give sponsorships. So if any of you in the course of your work will be holding some type of an event and you need sponsors, go to your banks and your credit unions. Like don't just seek grants, seek sponsorships, which are very, very different than grants, right? But you can seek both. All right, let's see. Uh, not familiar with that at all, Rodney. Not familiar with that at all. Uh, scope creep and chasing the money. You'll have to explain those to me. All right, let's see. All right. So those are all the questions that I see in the q and A. I'm going to hop over to the webinar chat because I see quite a few questions there. But yes, please write this off. Absolutely. Write this off. Write it off. What advice do I give to startups? So I want you to go back to the replay because I gave you a list. So there's a slide where I set the documentation that you need. Make sure you have that documentation. That's the best thing you can do. Have your documentation in order. Start from there and then do your grant searching. There are grants. So when you search for the actual grants, let's say you go into Grant Watch. There is a box that says startups and entrepreneurs and small businesses. Check that box. If you use Grant Station, there's a box that says entrepreneurs, for profits, 
uh, even startups, that's the box you want to check. And then it will give you a list of organizations that provide funding to startups. If you go to the foundation directory online, your keyword search, put in business startups, right? And then it will automatically generate organizations that give funding to startups. But make sure you have your documentation in order. I'm going from the top because I saw quite a few questions. So yes, you have three days to get the deal, right? It's $247, right? For a $5,000 course, you take it. I'm here for you. I give you support in the Facebook group. I give you support, whatever you do, if you buy the course, show up on Monday for the group coaching session because I, I can help you through this process to get this grant money, right? All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. And many of you, you have to start local. Like a lot of you are just leaving money on the table because you haven't searched locally. You have to search local. Okay, are all grants every five years? No, absolutely not. I'm not, I'm not sure where that came from, but no, that's, that's uh, incorrect information. Um, grants are typically for one year. Most grants are for one year. Absolutely. It's rare, rare that you can get a grant for multiple years. Typically, the organization wants to know that you're able to spend the money as you have indicated in the grant application. It is rare that you get a grant for more than a year. So most grants are for one year. Why do you have to pay fees for writing grants? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Fees to whom? Do you mean application fees? Why do you have to pay application fees to apply for grants? Or are you asking why do you have to pay somebody to write a grant for you? So if you could be specific because I have an answer for both. All right, let's see. All right, all right, let's see, let's see. Other, so it's, so if you pay $137.50 right now, you get everything. You get access to everything. Like I don't drip my course. So you get the whole course, access to the Facebook group, the group coaching, right? Next Monday, be on that group coaching call because I, I help you with what you are needing, right? To make sure you have what you need to get started, right? Absolutely. All right. And then you just pay the, the other $137.50 a, a month. But you have three days. So you have until sun, you have until Sunday, right? A lot of people, they're so happy paying the $497 because they realize that they have a $5,000 course. You actually get it for $247. So it's even cheaper for you. All right. Most people have no code. You have a really, really good code. Yes, yeah, support members. Yes. Yeah, that that's I could do a whole different webinar on the board members. Just for all of you nonprofits, please make sure you are not uh, filling up your board members with family and friends. That's like the worst thing you can possibly do, and it will keep you from getting grant money. What if you are a startup? Go through um, the webinar. There, go through the documentation slide and um, search based on a startup business or an entrepreneur. Yay, just downloaded Grammarly. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. A grant proposal is similar to a business plan. The biggest difference is that the business plan is going to ask you for more of a marketing plan. So in addition to what's on the grant application, the business plan will ask for more of a marketing plan. And also the questions are different. Grant application questions are asked a little bit differently, right? Uh, because I have written the questions for a grant application, I, sometimes they're, they're looking for keywords. They're looking for like buzzwords, right? And so it, it can be a little different. So I absolutely would not use a business plan to solely apply to a grant application, right? Because they're going to be looking for information worded a little bit differently, right? So that's why it, to me, is always best to learn how to specifically write grants. That's important. Plus this course teaches you how to research because at the end of the day, you need to know that the organization that you are applying to is aligned with you somehow. Like you don't want to just blindly start completing grant applications, like throwing spaghetti against the wall and you just, you're going to see what sticks. No, there has to be a plan to this and that's why I'm here to help you. 
so that you're not spinning your wheels. You have a strategy, you have a plan so that you're in a better position to actually win the grant money. All right, let's see. So yes, Rodney, just ex explain those terms. Let me know exactly what it is that you're that you're asking and the information that you need. So most of the banks that I'm speaking of are your typical banks like Bank of America, Chase Bank. They're your typical banks that uh, provide services to consumers and businesses. Those are the banks that I'm speaking of. Again, the credit unions, I wouldn't go to the credit unions for grants. I would go to the credit unions for sponsorships. Uh, oh, please ask. Always ask why you didn't get the grant money because they will hopefully tell you and that way you will be better prepared when you submit your next application. You don't always get grant money the first time you apply. You never know. I'll give you an example. Like complete uh, uh, honesty as to what happened. I remember I had a client. I applied for a grant. I knew the application was great. Like I, I knew that this application was great. Submitted it, community foundation. We didn't get the grant. I was like shocked. And I asked like, why didn't we get this grant? Because I knew everything in that grant was like on par. And they told us that they went to the website and didn't see a well enough representation in the website that they were operating in that particular city. So they even said that grant application was great. That's why you always ask. So what do we do? We revamped the website and sure enough, we got it the next time. You always ask, and and please, if you get a rejection letter, don't just take it and never apply again. Ask why you didn't get it. Revise that application. You're you're going to be in a better position to get it than initially, right? Because now you know they reviewed it. Now you know where your gaps are, so that you can make changes. Is it harder to get grants if you don't have any employees? No, no. The the people that you saw that got grants. They don't have tons of employees. So most of them don't have any employees at all, right? Again, it is about impact. You don't have to have a paid employee. You could maybe have a contractors that help you, right? Or volunteers. You can get money if you have contracted workers or volunteers. Don't think you have to have like paid W-2 employees. And as I mentioned, there are organizations that are all volunteer organizations. Nobody's getting paid and they get grant fund, grant funding. Again, it's about impact. The $247 course is online, self-paced, yes, with a live session once a month, the last Monday of the month. Yes, that is correct. It's not weekly. It's once a month, the last Monday of the month, you have your live session where you come on to get help. Yes, 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 yes. All right, other questions. Let me just make sure, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, so Lisa told her, told her story and won her grant. She said, websites are important. You can create yourself one, absolutely. So you see, like, this is not just things I'm telling you, like to fill up some space. Like, I'm telling you what works. I've won $17 million in grants. I know what they're looking for, right? And that... All of that has gone into the course. I know what they're looking for. And so when I teach you how to write, right, you're literally just answering questions. And then the questions that you that you answer, the answers that you provide, either in that Word document or in a template, you are ready. You're going to use that template to start applying for grants, right? And then that way you only have to tweak every grant that you apply to. You're not starting from scratch every time because you have an in-depth grant template where you can utilize the information because you've thought about it, it's ready, and you can then copy and paste it into the new grant application, but you have to tweak it because every question is different, but you're not reinventing the wheel on every single grant application that you're applying to because you've done the work. The course allows you to do the work. All right, let's see. 
Yeah, so I will give everybody um, the referral for the web developer. Again, they're people that I know. They're, they look like us. They're fantastic. Depending on a program, you could create a membership program. Yes, 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 you could. A lot of organizations are, are beginning to create membership programs. All right, let's see, let's see. Any other questions? Let's get down to the end here. Rodney says fundraising, fundraising is 80% of the ED's job. Oftentimes, that is very true. So you have to have a strategy. That is so important to have a strategy, right? And it's one of the reasons why I oftentimes work with organizations, um, you know, like Habitat for Humanity or Easter Seals, because they have uh, employees that are dedicated, right, to raising funding. And these people are not necessarily professional fundraisers. They're not grant writers, right? Which is why they love the course. They love the coaching that I give to them. A lot of them get the one-on-one -on -one so that we start off, right, in that meeting and they leave with complete clarity and then they come back to the Facebook group for questions, right? Um, but yes, I work with, you know, larger organizations because a lot of the staff that are oftentimes hired to lead these organizations, they're not grant writers, right? They're not professional fund developers. That's why they get the coaching. They need the help, right? So that they have a strategy and they're not wasting time. All right, let's see, let's see, let's see. It's hard to find these grants, not sure which grants you're you're talking about. That's the purpose of the course is to literally show you where to find grants. I literally show you where you find your grants. My grant will deal with conservation for my church getting plexiglass. Excellent, excellent. That is so good, right? Because you have your target. Your target is the church, right? You are wanting to use green theories, right? So that you conserve energy. I think I think you should be looking out for the Lilly Foundation uh, grant because that's such a good use of grant funding. Like some churches use grant money to maybe become ADA, right, accessible. Some churches use grant money because they need to put an elevator in because they have senior citizens, they don't have an elevator. But you know what you're doing is, I think that's great. I think you would really uh, do well to apply for one of those Lilly Foundation grants because not, a, not every church really can apply for one of those grants, but what you're doing is just right on the money. Are there grants specifically for cemeteries? I don't know of any grants specifically for cemeteries, but that doesn't mean you can't get a grant, right? So let me just say this. There's three different areas for which you need to search for grants, including you, Glory. One is your gender ethnicity. There are grants that will be made available to you um, because I think you're a female, right? If you're a female, there will be grants available to you because you're female. There will be grants available to you because you're a minority, right? It matters less what you do. You apply for the grant because you're a minority and because you're a female. That's gender, right? Ethnicity. That's one category. That's how you're searching. The next search will be for your mission, right? You want to align your mission to the mission of an organization in your community. And if you are, if you have cemeteries, I would absolutely look to your local community, right? Because you are, you are absolutely serving your local community if you have a cemetery. So look first to your local community, right? The mission, right? There may be um, a neighborhood grant because you're in the neighborhood, you're serving the community, you're serving neighborhoods, you could apply for that, right? The other one is industry. And this is where most of you don't think about this opportunity. Look to your industry for grants. If you are a transportation company, look to FedEx. They have a grant out right now. Look to UPS, right? If someone um, was going to open up a nail salon for men, like a, a nail and you know Manny Petty salon for men. I said, look to the industry, look to Opie. Opie makes the, the nail polish, right? Look to your industry. If you're opening up a restaurant, Hennessy has a grant, 
right? The liquor company, look to your industry. If you have a restaurant, you're going to be serving liquor. Look to your industry. So that's three, your industry, matching up and aligning the mission, and then gender and ethnicity. And that covers everybody. So just so you know, it's not a matter of whether or not there's a grant for you. There's grant money available. It's how you position yourself to get it. You have to research and find the organizations that are going to give you money. So if you're doing any type of legal service product, right, or program, there's money available. You have to find out who's going to give it to you. It's not as if there's not money available. All right, let's just go to the end. Is there a guarantee to get a grant? I already talked about that. There are no guarantees. Please don't let anybody tell you that. They're, they're, typically, if, if someone is telling you they can guarantee you grant money, they're trying to scam you. And I can, I, and I literally, after 16 years, I can make that blanket statement. If somebody is trying to tell you that they have guaranteed grant money for you, more than likely, it is a scam. All right. All right. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. How do you determine whether you should be a nonprofit or for-profit and how to set up? So the uh, the 501c3, you go through the IRS. There's a, So we dropped the link into the chat. If you want the 501c3, that's as a nonprofit. You have, that only applies to nonprofits. Go to the link. You have to make decisions as to whether or not your organization is going to be um, a nonprofit or a for-profit, right? Um, that's the decision that you're going to have to make right? Uh, like that's not a decision I ever, ever make for people because you know, there's more, there's more grant money for nonprofits. Absolutely. Because there's always been grants for nonprofits. So grants for for-profits are recent, but yes, there's grant money for for-profits. They each operate very, very differently. There are different requirements, right? The nonprofit, you have to have a board. So whatever money is generated goes back into the nonprofit. Right, it 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 has to go back into the nonprofit. For profit, you can distribute it, create income for yourself. It's a totally different legal structure, right? And sometimes it does depend on what you're doing, because sometimes there's just more grant money available for nonprofits in that area. Like if you're providing basic needs like shelter or clothing or food right? Or oftentimes, you know, elementary education or uh, even, you know, going up through junior high or high school, you know, typically you see nonprofits providing those types of services, you know, services to the homeless, again, food, shelter, clothing. Typically those are nonprofits, but, you know, that's something that I would work with you uh, on a little bit more uh, after you bought the course and you can come into the Facebook group and, you know, I can give you more detailed information about that um, because I would just have more time to address it. All right. Let's see. Any other questions? I think I see a few more. All right. Let's see. Let's see. So, yes, you have the three days. That is correct. You have three days, $247, one and done. And that's forever, like that you don't pay anything else. Will you be able to identify the grants that allow you to pay employees? You have to do that. When you do your research, right? Typically it will tell you right on the page, the requirements, like every grant has requirements of what you can and cannot do with the money. It will be very clear as to whether or not you can Hire employees, and it just, but it also depends on what you mean when you say pay employees. Do you mean pay for salaries? That's administrative support. Most grants would prefer that you not use their money for salaries unless it is an operating grant. If you get a general operating support grant, you can put that money wherever you want. So if you know you want to pay the salary of an employee, and it could be yourself, right? You search for the general operating support grants. Now, there's a caveat to that. Let's say you just want to hire a contractor. 
right? Let's say you're the program manager and you need to be paid, right? So you're listed as a contractor. You can use program money to pay for your own fees to pay yourself as a contractor, right? As long as what you're doing is laser focused on that program. So if the program that you have requires a leader, some type of a leader, lead instructor or program manager, yes, you can use program money to literally pay yourself to be the program manager. You can do that. But if you're just if you're actually looking to like hire salary personnel, look for a general operating support grant. And like I said, only about 32% of grants are available to pay for general operating support. When you get a grant, will you be able to continue to get the grant yearly with the same information, with the same information you submitted the first time? No, no, no. One, grants are not guaranteed in year two. I talked about that. Grants are not guaranteed in year two. But if you're submitting a grant in year two, switch up your application a bit. Switch it up a bit. Like, don't submit the exact same application. Foundations really don't like that because that's saying to them, you haven't done anything new, right? Like, what, what has happened over the course of the year? You've gotten this money. How did you use it? How did it change your program? Were you able to hire additional personnel? Were you able to improve your program at all, right? So you have to think like the funder. So, no, you need to switch it. And that's where we can help you with things like the wording. Right, so if you're waiting to submit a second application for year two, you come into the Facebook group or you come on the group coaching call and you ask, right? And then we will be able to help you, all right? All right, let's see, let's see. Other questions. I answered the question about the startups. Do churches need to contact um, the Secretary of State I would just do that anyway to see if you're registered as an entity, because even, even if you are a church, you still should be registered as an entity. So I would double check anyway, for sure. The time of the session on Monday is uh, seven o'clock PM Eastern Standard Time. The recessions, the sessions are always recorded. Oh, application fees. So Dr. Celestine is asking whether or not um, it's, I, I think, normal for there to be application fees. Rarely, rarely are there ever an application fee. I know of one current application, the Amber Grants for Women, they charge you, I think, $25. That is literally the only application that I'm aware of right now where you have to pay a fee to submit a grant application. That's it. Like 99.999% of the time, there should not be an application fee. So be careful of what you click on and what you're applying for. I literally got this question this morning and the, the student, right, sent me an email because she's like, uh, this organization is charging me this big fee to apply for a grant. And she sent me the email. And sure enough, she had clicked some other third party organization that was trying to get money from her so that they could give her access to the grant. I'm like, no, go, go directly to the source. Go to the grant application of the organization providing the grant. That's where you want to apply. If you start going through third parties, they're going to charge you, right? And some type of application fee to help you process the application. You don't need to do that. Go to the source. So 99.99% of the time, nope, no application fee. All right, let's see. If you if your church has trustees, that's fine. Yes, absolutely. The trustees are fine. I'm taking questions in both areas, Q&A and in the webinar chat. So if you um, want questions, you can still drop them into the q and I'm doing them both. All right, if you, not have, uh, if you do not already have the experience or education for this. Oh, you should get this. Oh, <laughs> Lisa's saying yes. Can the board members be a church or would it have to be individual? No, board members are individuals. 
do you go over what the money will be used for in a more polished way also? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's what we help you with for sure. So we help you. Let's say you want to spend, let's say you need $10,000 and you know you need it, but you really don't know how you need to itemize it. Yes. You know, come into the Facebook group, come on the group coaching call. You'll get clarity with that. All right. Back over to the Q&A. Let's see. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Does your company email address have any effect on your application? That's interesting. I've seen a couple of applications, not a lot, but I have seen a couple of applications where they prefer that you have a company email address instead of like a Gmail or um, a Yahoo, but that's rare. It's not like I haven't seen it, but it, 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 it does not keep you from applying. I'm just saying I've seen a couple of applications where they prefer that you have a company email address, but I've only seen a couple of applications like that. So the name of the Facebook group is Grant Writing for Non-Writers, but there are two Facebook groups. So you will get a link if you buy the course, because whatever you do, you don't want to be in the wrong Facebook group. So you will get a link to the Facebook group once you buy the course. And so you won't have to you won't have to ponder about it. You will get a link, but it's uh, grant writing for non-writers, keys winning grant proposals. But there's two courses with very there's two Facebook groups with very similar names. Yes, the course is online, self paced, get your own pace, with monthly live sessions. So if you have one found, can you multiply people in the foundation access? Send me an email about that. Send me an email. Because if they are, if you have one entity, right, one organization, I'm not sure why you would have, like most organizations don't have three grant writers. So I'm not sure why three people would need access to a course from a foundation because typically there's one uh the course provides access for one person. So if you have something a little different, send me an email. Oh, excellent question, Fred. Excellent question. How do you get grants that say invitation only? I can't tell you how many grants I've gotten that says invitation only, because you know what that says to me? When I see a grant that says invitation only, most people are like, I don't have an invite. So, right. So first of all, it means that there is no open application on the website. There's no way you can click a button and, and have an application come to you and have you apply. There are no open application. The applications are closed. But when I see, right, a sign that says invitation only, you know what I think? Okay, I need to get an invite. I mean, immediately, that's, that's what I think. Okay, if it's invitation only, I need to get an invite. I need to be invited to apply. And that's exactly what I do. And I can't tell you how many grants I've gotten that said invitation only. You know what you do? You do exactly what I outlined in this in this webinar. You go to the organization's website. If they don't have a website, you go to their 990 because you're looking for a name. If you don't have the 990, you can go to LinkedIn, right? Get Find a person's name that works for that foundation. Get the email address. You've got getemail.io for free for 10 emails. Send that person an introductory email saying why the mission aligns, right? Why what you're doing would be of interest to that organization and ask them for an invite. That's what you do. If you obtain an EIN, does that mean you are registered as an entity? That No, that means you have an EIN number. You have an employer identification number. You still have to register to become an entity. All right. Okay, let me see if there's any other questions. All right, so I'm almost um, almost down to the end here. Let me just see if there are any. Da, 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 da. I didn't have a documented board. Can it be a volunteer board? Well, most boards are volunteer boards, but it, it still needs to be documented that you have a board. 
<laughs> excuse me. So typically you're not paying your board member anyway. You're not paying your board. If anything, your, your board should have fees where they pay you to serve on the board. But you still need to document the board. So most boards are volunteer boards anyway. But you still need to have those names listed as board members. Oh, thank you. I'm a former proposal center manager for a global IT company. Today's call alone is worth thousands of dollars in grant awards. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Terry, send me an email. I am a grant writing aspiring, grant writer aspiring, and I'm working with several groups. Is this course right for me? Who is not promoting my own org, but helping others? Absolutely, because you're learning how to write grants. So I have professional grant writers who take the course, right? I have a number of professional grant writers who take the course because they want to learn how to write better one, but also how to find the grants for the organizations that they're helping. Right. So when you are searching, whether it's Grant Watch or Grant Station, let's say you have three different organizations. One may be for serving the homeless. One may be a for profit. Right. That serves veterans. The other may be um, serving like a, a maybe a real estate company. Right. That wants to produce affordable housing. You've got three different target populations. Right. So you're going to be using this course to search for grants for all three target populations. Right. The process is going to be the same. You you research, you send out those separate email letters, right, to each individual grantor or foundation based on the companies that you have. But it will help you, right, with the organization of what you are doing. Because if you are writing for multiple organizations, you need to streamline the process. Right, you need to streamline that process so that it's less work for you. Okay. Lisa says, go to the library. There's a whole grant and foundation department for nonprofits. Yes, libraries are, like I said, they're criminally underutilized. Oh, no problem. So this is what's great about the course. Um, even if you, so the course is self-paced. So you didn't miss out on anything because you go back to the course anytime you want to. That's one thing that I, I share with people all the time. There's no expiration date on the course, right? There's no expiration date on the course. You go back to the course as many times as, as you want. And like right now we're updating the course. How do you separate if your business is both nonprofit and LLC to get grants? Well, that's easy because when you are searching for grants, it's it's clearly states whether or not it's a grant for a nonprofit or a for-profit. So that's clear in the grant. So when you utilize your search engine portals, whether it's GrantStation or GrantWatch, that's how you are looking, right? Unless you specifically put that you are a small business right, or an entrepreneur or a startup, it's going to give you nonprofit grants. But like in Grant Watch, you click the button. You have a button that you click to determine whether or not you are a nonprofit, a for-profit, or an individual. And so you do the searches separately. You search for your nonprofit, right? You clear that search, and then you search for the uh, LLC, which is a for-profit. Right, that's right, Fonda. No more delays. Like this is. Oh, did you did you all know that there are organizations that are not happy that black organizations are getting are getting grant money. That's why I'm saying, please do not wait. There are organizations that are being sued because they're giving grant money to black organizations like Hello Alice, like Progressive, like Fearless Fund, right? that are being sued because they're giving grant money to black organizations. So whatever you do, please don't wait. Like, don't let, don't just let this be another webinar that you sit on because the grant money is available. Black organizations are getting grant money. Like put forth a little bit of effort to get somebody else's money, right? To fund your organization because I get it. Right. A lot of you are self-funding. You've been self-funding for a long time because you haven't, you just haven't, 
knowing where to go or how to search. And for a lot of you, it is very taxing on your budget and your income. You have a passion, right? You love your nonprofit or you love your for-profit, but your pocketbook has been drained. It is just about dry. You want to still help, but the finances are bearing on you. I get it. So here's an opportunity for you to get help. All right, let's see. Research sometimes uh, takes a lot of time, but that's why you need help, right? That's why you need direction so that you are not spinning your wheels. Part of the course, literally, I have a whole module just on grant search, just on grant research, so that you know where to look and how to look, right? I have a video where I do live grant searches for you so that you see how you look, right? So that you literally see how you are going to be searching because it can be very time intensive if you don't have direction, all right? All right, let's see. Do you go over video pitches in your sessions? I absolutely would be happy to go over video pitches. Yes. I also tell you what you need to talk about when you meet. When This is big in the Facebook group because people will come and say, oh, I'm meeting with the bank. I'm meeting with the bank next week. I'm meeting with my potential partner next week. Like, what do I say? What do I do? What do I bring with me? Yes, all of that's covered. All of it. Oh, the Amber Grant is definitely not a scam. They're the only organization I know that charges $25 for an app application fee, but oh my gosh, they're definitely not a scam. You just want to avoid the third parties. The Amber Grant is true and true. They've been giving away money, uh, supporting specifically women's organizations for years. They are absolutely legitimate. All right. All right, so all the other questions I have answered already, I believe we are done. All right, so everyone, first of all, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for hopping on. I appreciate it very much so. Um, but first of all, let's we have to give Larissa, let's give Larissa some love. Larissa was like, when I said I'm ready to get grant money, I... I'm ready to get grant money. So let's give Larissa, I want to see some hearts and some clapping of hands. <laughs> Excuse me. Let's give Larissa some love. When you buy the course, you will get three emails, a welcome email, right? An email with a link to the Facebook group. That is important. You will get an email with your username and your, your password. You're not waiting on me. You get started, but I will see you Monday. <laughs> Excuse me, Monday in the group coaching session where I absolutely have to get you off to the best start. And if you buy the one-on-one, -on -one, you have complete clarity because we literally go through your organization. All right, all right. So all of you, I hope to see you in the Facebook group or in the group coaching session. I hope that you allow me to be your coach and to take the course and to guide you through. You have three days, <laughs> excuse me, until Sunday to get it. And what I want you to do is to really honestly give yourselves a round of applause because you have no idea from my perspective, I've been in this business 16 years. So many organizations want to do what you're doing. They want to help. They want to start a for-profit. They want to start a nonprofit and they don't do anything about it. Here you are trying to make it work, spending your lunch on a webinar trying to find out how you can get this money to make it work. So what you're doing, you need to know is phenomenal. So I want to thank everybody so much. I appreciate your time and your attention for sure. My name is Linda Peavy. I'm the founder of LaPov Consulting and creator of the course Grant Writing for Nonwriters, Keys to Winning Grant Proposals. And I wish you a safe and a blessed rest of the day, rest of the new year. And as I always say, it's 2024. Expect more. Expect more in 2024. All right. Thank you. I hope to see you all in the course. Okay, bye bye.